All right, so for, I'll call the uh, Town of Groton Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order. We all on? Hmm? We're recording, right? You're good. We're good. All right. First item is roll call. Al Zod. Here. Mike Kane. Here. C. Sue Southern. Here. 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 And uh, since Steve is not here, I'll I'll uh, have Kevin sit for for Steve. So of our five people. First item uh, public hearings. Public hearing for Hatchmar subdivision. Would you read the uh, ad for that notice, Hal? Notice is hereby given that the following public hearing will be held on February 14th, 2023, at 7 p.m. in Community Room 2, Town Hall, Annex 134, Groton Long Point Road, and virtually via the Zoom platform to hear the following. SCP 22 02, Subdivision of Land, Masafi. Catchmore, reading two residential lots on a 1.01 acre lot parcel of land at zero High Street. Articles identified as 26191434100 on a plan titled Subdivision Plan. Plot layout of the property of Safi Catchmore, zero High Street, RS20 zone. <clears throat> a Zoom meeting link will be posted to the town's website meeting calendar or can be attended by visiting www.zoom.us webinar ID 831-6307-6894, password 407373, or by phone 1301-715-8592. Applications are on file and available for public inspection during normal business hours at the Planning Department, 134 Groton Long Point Road, Connecticut, of Groton, Connecticut, dated this third day of February, 2023, at Groton, Connecticut. Okay. So uh, I'll just briefly go over the process of the meeting. We'll listen to the uh, presentation by the applicant, then uh, report by staff, open it up for any public communications, and then open it up to the commission for any questions that, and repeat this until all the questions are answered or we have all the information we need <clears throat> to uh, make a determination for using that information for the public hearing. Because after the public hearing is closed, we cannot receive any additional information. Uh, turn it over to the applicant. The applicants are actually online, Jim Bernardo and Safi Kashma, the owner. Hi there. Can, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Hi. Uh, I, I'd like to be able to share my screen. Can you allow me to do that? Hold on just a minute, Jim. I guess I have to do join as a panelist. Yeah. Okay. Can you still hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Jim Bernardo. I'm a professional land surveyor. Uh, in Connecticut, and I'm here tonight rep representing the property owner who is uh, Safi Kashmar. He's also on the call. Um, if we have any questions, we can refer to him. Um, first of all, on the uh, plan set, I just want to make sure I call to everybody's attention because I'm only referring to uh, the, the north and east, and the north is pointing to the left-hand side of the piece of paper, and and south would be to the right-hand side on all our on on our on all of our plan sets. So just keep that in mind. So. Um, this property is uh, zero high street. It's in the RS 20 zone and the applicant is proposing to subdivide it into two lots. It's 1.01 acres. Uh, it's surrounded on the north and east side by the Peace Sanctuary and on the east by a, a residential home. There are no wetlands actually directly located on the property. Uh, we did secure permission from the adjacent property owner, the Peace Sanctuary for uh, Joe Thoreau, our soil scientist to go out there to delineate the wetlands in the field. 
Um, once those were delineated, it was determined that the previous owner had placed some fill in the upland area. So a violation was issued and the current owner subsequently got approval for IWA 2204 back in April of 21 to uh, stabilize the, sl the slopes and the, uh, the areas in the upland review area. We subsequently applied and were granted uh, IWA 2210 by the commission in November of 2020 for this subdivision. Uh, and one of the conditions of approval was that there should be no activity when 75 feet of the surrounding wetlands without further review of the commission. So we, we've uh, shown on our plan, both the 100 foot regulated area, and we also have the 75 foot regulated area with a note indicating that uh, any disturbance within the 75 feet would require further commission review. Uh, also, what we did after the wetlands uh, commission input we, and the walking of the property, uh, we reduced lot one down to the minimum required in the zone of 20,000 square feet and increased lot two up to 23,877. This gave us a little bit more buildable area on this lot to work with. So uh, lot one is the minimum square footage required in the RS20 zone and lot two is 23,877 square feet. And we do meet all the uh, bulk requirements for the RS20 for these parcels of land. If we move on to sheet CO2, um, we show conceptual house developments on sheet C2 and C3. Uh, lot one is intended to be built first as a residence for the current property owner. And then lot two, which is the one on the, on the north side, that will be developed sometime in the future. And there's no immediate plan for that. So what we've done is we proposed a phasing plan for the all the erosion and sediment controls. Ed Wenke has put together uh, two plans. C2 shows the erosion and sediment controls that will need to be in place for the construction of the uh, lot one. And then if you go to the second page, which is uh, next page, which is C3, it shows the, uh, the same, act, the same uh, erosion control measures and narrative for the maintenance and of the erosion control measures for lot two. Um, each lot will have an individual, individual driveway to access the property, and those, those will meet the Town of Groton standards for the bituminous aprons, and um, right now we're proposing just a gravel driveway on lot one. Um, lot two, again, is again just shown as a conceptual. We're not sure what's going to happen as far as the construction as, uh, goes on that particular lot. The property currently uh, is surrounded by stone walls on the north. There's a wall that runs here and all the way down this way here. Um, there'll be uh, no disturbance of those pr uh, property line walls and uh, there's very little vegetation left after the site stabilization, stabilization was completed, but stop. whatever. Okay. Okay. Oh, I thought somebody had a question. Uh, just along the north, there's still some trees remaining and those, those will stay in place because there's no act further activity on that slope that's already been stabilized. Um, each lot's going to be served by the existing aquarium water, which, which runs on High Street. That's this line here with the W's on it. Um, if you look at, C, at sheet CO4, the, uh, the sanit here's, here's the corner of lot one here. So the sanitary sewer actually ends about 125 feet south of the site. So we will be extending the sewer uh, under the road uh, up, up to a new manhole located um, just within the property limits, uh, still within the roadway. And um, the will require a low pressure force main to pump up into the sewer for both lot one and lot two. Um, if I flip back to this one, you'll see um, here's a conceptual for a house and there'll be a force main that comes across lot one and ties into that sewer manhole. So uh, in addition, we have underground utilities coming from this utility pole here across lot one and, and going to the house. So we've created uh, an easement across the front of lot one for the, um, for the utilities. Um, all the utilities will be underground. The uh, applicant is not proposing any open space for this project. So instead they're requesting to pay the, the fee in lieu uh, based on the appraised value of 180,000. There would be a, a payment in lieu of 18,000 for the um, open space. The, uh, we are requesting two waivers, a waiver of section 5.41 of your subdivision regulations. This is regarding the completion of the public improvements. Um, the only public improvements for this project would be the planting of the street trees along High Street and the setting of the property line monuments uh, for the subdivision. And since we have this activity going on in the front with new driveways being cut in and not knowing where the development is going to be on lot two, as well as the sewer being brought up and the, and the uh, sanitary low pressure force mains, 
we're asking that a bond for those be um, posted so that we can um, construct both of these lots. And then uh, before receiving a CO on the final property, the, uh, the public improvements would be completed. So that's the first waiver, that's 5.4, number one. And then also uh, 4.71, which is to permit the existing five foot by two minutes walk. There's an existing five foot by two minutes walk that runs uh, across the entire frontage. It goes up to about uh, Sandy Hollow and I can't remember how far south, but it's all by two minutes, there's no concrete. And so we're asking for a waiver of the requirement to put five foot concrete sidewalks and just to allow the, the um, existing five foot by two minutes, which is in very good condition, uh, just to leave that remaining in place for the, uh, for the project. Um, that is, that is all I have. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. I know I went through it pretty quickly, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. So I'll turn it over to Steph. Uh, and she, <laughs> she's going to be back in a minute. Yeah, yeah, this is Tabitha's project. Um, let's see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So. She left notes. Um, so first of all, the certificates of mailing um, are in order. Um, we received just one inquiry about the hearing, um, but no other um, written um, correspondence. Um, it did receive, the project did receive wetland approval recently as, as Jim noted. Um, and the two waivers that he noted, um, the, the sidewalk has been, um, leaving the two minutes sidewalk, Greg Hanover is in favor of that public works department. As a matter of fact, the sidewalk along High Street in this area was replaced by Public Works less than 10 years ago. Um, and I will defer to Tabitha when she comes back. If she has any more. There she is. I ran through your notes. It's a good thing you have your notes. <laughs> I have a motion sheet here. Okay. I, I through this. Okay, thank you. Did you have anything else to add, Tabitha? Um, if, if Deb covered the notes, there really wasn't much else to add um, other than I have a motion sheet for you. Okay. Does anyone in the public wish to address the commission on this item? I'm just wondering is it, is it uh, the owner of that house? That's being lived in there. It's part of that. It was part of that property. All right. Well, do they own that property? There's the, the people who live right to the yes. side of it. No, no, the, those people do not. This is uh, Sophie, Sophie Kashmar's property. So and, he's on the line right here. He can speak. Okay. And this is going to live there. Is, is he planning on living there? Oh, yes. Right. He'll I speak for himself. I, I live across the street. Mr. Cashman? Yeah. yeah, I'm planning on living there. Definitely. Great. That was it. Does anyone? Andy needs to say his name. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Andy Dracos. I live in the closest street. Okay. Thank you. Is anyone on? Uh, is there anybody on the call that's. Uh, wants to address. So if there's anyone who is on the Zoom call who wants to um, submit public information here, you do need to raise your hand. Any hand? Nope. Okay, so I'll open it up then to the commission for any questions. Let's start with you, Hal. Um, I don't believe I have any. Um, I guess it's an engineering question is that I'm not accustomed to seeing a force main for a individual private lots as opposed to something that's more robust for a neighborhood. Is that a normal thing? It is annoying. <laughs> Actually, no, it's not typically uh, done, no. Uh, but because the what ends up happening is the sewer is so shallow by the time we get, get the proper pitch of the pipe to get up to where we're putting in the manhole it's only uh, the sewer manhole is only about four to five feet deep i believe so there's no way we could get a gravity sewer out from the house uh, from either one of the houses to tie into there so um, low pressure sewer mains 
are common, but but not very often. So what you'll see is that out in the front of each, like there's one over here. If I'm still, I'm assuming I'm still sharing my screen, and then off to the right over here on lot one, those are basically a septic tank with a pump in it. So um, they will they will contain a pump system with an alarm system, which will pump it up into the street. Uh, again, the preference would be to go gravity feed, uh, but unfortunately, because of the depth of the sewer, we can't do that on these two lots. And um, it does not appear that the lots would real, would would support on-site septics uh, because of the amount of fill and the disturbance that was done on the property. So that's why the sewers were um, extended up the road. Does that some have some capacity? Yes. Significant. Uh, so that so when the pump fails, which is a when, um, it doesn't shut things down completely and start to overflow immediately. Those are typically done in a thousand gallon uh, septic tank with alarm system with alarm. Uh, systems put in, which will signal if there's a problem with the pumps. Okay. And uh, I'm okay with the, with the two minutes walk remaining. It sounds fine for that, that area. No further questions. Anything else? Mike, do you? Um, I guess uh, I, I, um, the only thing that I, the waiver for the bond uh, for the public improvements, it sounds like it wouldn't, uh, like you you don't want to do it until the public improve until the second uh, C of O, but but we don't know how long that's going to take, and it sounds like it could be forever, mm. or that there's no plans at this point for that. So, so this waiver um, um, actually pertains to a regulation in the subdivision regs that says that. Um, we are going to hold 10% or two of all of the building permits until the public improvements are completed. So they're asking for a waiver of that section um, saying that they will post a bond for all of the public improvements and basically not ask for it back until all they're all done. Um, mostly because doing during construction of these lots, they're going to be running over areas that, yeah. that are part of the public improvements. Um, and they're not required, you know, absent this waiver, they're not required to post a bond for the public improvements unless they sell a lot. So they don't they don't have to post a bond if he's not going to sell any lots. Um, so he's asking for a waiver of the holding of the building permits saying, I'm going to post the bond yeah. right up front. Okay, I guess my concern is that the things don't get done or that it's, what is it? I, are there just trees? Is that with the public improvements? It's so trees. It doesn't sound like it's a lot. It's not. It's monumentation. It's trees and it's the driveway. And if the sidewalk that is there is damaged? Right. The bond will. Would protect okay, that as well? That's correct. Okay. So it'll be for that amount then to that, that's, repair that's, the sidewalk. That's right. And then my understanding is I think it's lot one is going to um, be under construction first. They will not get a CO unless the public improvements associated with that lot at least are done. It's going to have to have the driveway apron done and the, any damage to the, the sidewalk will have to be fixed. And okay. his trees. Uh, yep, and his trees. Yeah, Great. okay. I just want to make sure that we're not like left with a big mess and that it's not done. And then uh, I guess uh, to follow up on Hal's question, are, do you put uh, like a generator in the house? to alleviate that septic or do you just rely on the thousand gallons? Is that your insurance? We would, we always recommend you put a gen, you have a generator, but, and we encourage people to do that, but it's not a requirement. It's just the, uh, just the storage that's in the tank. And should the power be out for an extended period of time or the pumps be broke for an extended period of time, the homeowner is going to have to hire a septic company to come in and pump the tank for them. Stop flushing. Okay. Yeah. Right, so stop Thank flushing. You. Yeah. No, that's it. No, no, no. That's <laughs> what you do. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Sure. So, do you have any? Yeah, questions? I'm just trying to understand how it's going to work with the bond. I guess. So. Um, well, is the bond part of the public hearing, or is that part of our a motion to? A... Well, it's part of the waiver request. So, if you've got any questions about about it, we should have more mechanism type mm -hmm. of question. Right. I, I was just curious if you. If they go ahead and complete the one house and um, the sidewalk is fine, and et cetera, et cetera, then um, will they get like half the bond back at that point? They can request it. I mean, that comes to you folks. Right. Um, and then we still won't have any, we won't, 
we'll, we'll have some sort of bond left if and when the other lot was ever developed, right? That's correct. And there's nothing in the meantime that would be a problem not having it completed? Other not, than not if there's not a treatment. house there. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, I guess the bituminous is already there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. That was it. Kevin? Um, yeah, so I'm fine with yes. I, I'm fine with the bituminous, um, <clears throat> but um, my point on the bond, I understand what I've just listened to um, very well, but my point is it's still a subdivision. Let's just post the bond. So, and I don't see why we're hold, trying to hold off on the bond. And that's the only, um, I, don't, I don't really like that exception. I don't, I don't think it's necessary. It's a subdivision, so let's post the bond. Pretty simple. Those are my thoughts, Jeff, that's all. Okay. I just had one question. Are there three trees required on on this? And we have you're showing us um we the plan as red oaks. So far. Hmm? You're showing on the plan as red oaks. Would the red oaks match the rest of the street trees? Yes, it's the part of the road and drainage standard street trees. Sorry. They, they are uh, on the list of recommended street trees. Oh, I just want to think. Sometimes it's nice if you keep the same tree room, if it's a good species, you know, which that one is. But if you just had a few red oaks sticking up, it might look odd. That's all. I mean, it all depends. You have to know what you're looking at. Minor comment. Point taken. The street is the peace sanctuary. So. That's right. Mm -hmm. Aesthetics. There. What about those trees over there? So red oak. Mm -hmm. pines, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So, does anyone on the commission have anything else to add? Do you have enough information to, to act on this? <clears throat> does the applicant have anything else to? Uh, no, if there's no other questions, we have no, we have nothing to add. Thank you. We have a raised hand from Katie. Oh. Katie, you can unmute. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, great. Hi, um, Katie Bradford. I live at 505 High Street, right across the street from the property. And I am so happy that something is being done. It has looked like Agent Orange. And before that, it was goats and garbage and trash and everything. <laughs> so I'm in favor of some attention being paid. Um, not having sewer. I'm hoping to um, be involved in the conversation about extending the sewer up a little further. Andy, I think you're on the call too? Yeah. Okay, wouldn't it be nice to have sewer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so in the upcoming conversations, uh, let, let's consider maybe extending the sewer um, a little further up north on High Street. And thank you very much for the invitation to the meeting. So are there any, <clears throat> anybody have any other questions? We had a, a mo you have a motion. Is there anything on that? that I believe we need to close the hearing first. No. Something, something that needs to oh, get you to want to record. look at it first. No, to see, so not to pass it. I wanted to see what it. Is there anything that needs to get into the record? No, so nothing mm -hmm. needs to get into the record. So there's nothing that we, right, no, we haven't sure. talked about already. Right. That's what I, all I Correct. cared about. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, good. <laughs> that we didn't have to. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if nobody has any other questions, we have nobody else on the call to ask anything, then I'll make a motion to close the uh, public hearing for SUB 22-02. Is there a second? Second. It's moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. We'll vote on the motion to close the public hearing. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Okay, and we can move on to uh, consideration of the public hearings. Over the, we have subdivision 22-02. Just a second. 
technical technical issue here. Mm -hmm. I think I need to remove him and he needs to rejoin. Oh, oh we got a problem. You can just sit there quietly. <laughs> he can just sit there quietly. Who's that? Jim Bernardo. <laughs> oh, I'm still here. Nope, no, 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 you're not. You're quietly sitting there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> So if we pass out, the, has the applicant seen this motion? Yeah. Yes, we have. I reviewed it with the owner uh, earlier this morning, and uh, we're in, you know we we approve of that. We agree. I'm glad I can't see it. Yeah, it's not showing up. It didn't get to we'll put it here. <laughs> well, we have to read it. We have to read it. Oh, yeah, you, you need to and that's it. that's okay. Hmm? Yeah, well, before we can extra. discuss it. Oh, there's an extra. One. Hello. Yeah, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it will. Big space. Well, it actually, pick up the, something you, that's wrong. Can you switch around the view? Yeah. You're going to have to hire an IT person to it's run this every week. <laughs> <laughs> that way as well. Don't know we're going to be reading. Oh, we have a lot of them see it. There you go. All right. <clears throat> awesome. Oh. All right. Oops. Turn it the other way. Put on your reading glasses. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's there we are. Good. All right. Now we can read this. It's just a reflection in this glass. So I'll make. Oh. I'll make a motion <laughs> for subdivision 22-020 High Street Cashmere subdivision. Make a motion to approve a request for waiver of section 4.7A of the subdivision regulations to allow for an existing five foot wide bituminous sidewalk where a five foot wide concrete sidewalk is required. Findings. The commission finds that an existing bituminous walk exists and is found sufficient to support this project. This waiver request meets the findings of section 1.1 of the subdivision regulations. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, then we'll vote on the motion to approve the uh, waiver for the sidewalk. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion is carried unanimously. And I'll make them. Uh, make a motion to approve a request for waiver of section 5.4, parent 1 of the subdivision regulations to accept a bond for public improvements, including trees and monuments. Should we say in the sidewalk? Hmm? And, and to ensure repair. And to sidewalk. ensure uh, repair. Of, and to ensure repair of the sidewalk. Of any damage to the sidewalk. sidewalk. And to ensure repairs well, of the integrity of the damage we see to the sidewalk. Because it's likely in yeah. monuments and allow for building permits to be released for both lots. Uh, and do we need to mention that it goes on the CO for the second lot? No. We don't. It has so. for both lots. This means well, you. How do we know when it's cannot, going to be released? You cannot release the whole bond until both lots are done. Okay. 
That's what this uh, way I interpret. Yeah, it's not waiting. The entire. Oh, okay, gotcha. That's why they says for both lives. <laughs> That's why it says for being both. careful. Asking the questions. Is there a second? Second. It's moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, then we'll. Oh, when we have the finding here, the commission finds that this waiver request meets the findings of section 1 1 of subdivision regulations. Are there are no questions. We'll vote on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Now make a motion to approve the catchment subdivision zero high street for the following modifications. How can we have two? No one. <laughs> one. One in accordance with section 4.9, parent five, a pavement payment in lieu of open space of $18,000, the equivalent of 10% of the fair market value of the land prior to the subdivision shall be made prior to recording the plans. Two, that a bond shall be held for public improvements, including street trees, monuments, and, and repair, repair of any damage to the sidewalk. Number three, that all necessary final and signed easements are provided to staff prior to recording of the final plans. Four, all technical items raised by staff shall be addressed. Is there a second? Second. It's moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll vote on the motion to approve the Cashmere subdivision. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Good Have a good evening. <laughs> it's a, I hope nobody falls off the back of a lot. <laughs> That's a steep drop. It is, it is yeah. Hmm? Water goes downhill there. <laughs> okay. Zero height because it doesn't have a number. Doesn't still have, yeah. It has one Okay, the next item is uh, approval of minutes of previous meetings. I'll entertain a motion for approval of the minutes of January 24th. So moved. Is there a second? Se second. Moved and seconded. Does anyone have any corrections? I do. Go ahead, sir. <clears throat> On page um, three, it is, I think. Yes. Um, in the second paragraph, <clears throat> where um, it says Sutherland suggested updating the 2019 housing study, that isn't really why I suggested. It would be a lot of money and work. Um, I suggested that staff update. The housing study um, for any public units that have been built in Groton and in the um, commutable uh, towns around Groton. How do you update this? I think a lot of them we've had to approve here, and it, it would be your best guess rather than, and it doesn't have to be something that's a real micro thing. It's How do you update the study? Well, by they say, um, well, the, the study is like as of, I think, 2019. So you would take the data of whenever the study's data was, mm -hmm. and then you would just ask um, really town staff for their best um, estimate. Uh, or, you know, and there's something you, you know, of course, most of it probably all, not all, and uh, just come up with a number where you think we are now. So that'd be really useful, I think. Thanks. No, I'm just curious. I mean, how how do you update the study? I might ask a consultant for the exact date, right? Mm -hmm. And then for like that. Oh, sorry. Can you do that? Well, you can 
Or can you all put an appendix out or yeah, an something? No, it is, it's certainly, you know, get a good estimate of the number of units that have been built since that study took place. Like the hotel, for example, yeah. uh, the hotel changing. Yeah, if that was probably done after the study, yep. then I think it'd be nice to know, okay, that's so many units. And then there was, of course, the Pleasant Valley one, just the big ones like that. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Thank you. We'll see. Hmm? We'll see. <laughs> Does anyone have any other corrections? Yeah. Yes, I have one. Uh, I'm just re re quickly rewriting what we should add. For the reporting commission, the last sentence just need to put in there. We did agree on something for the uh, about the committee that was being put together to evaluate town owned properties. Mm -hmm. And we did kind of agree at, that the procedure for the time being is that such discussions as, as took place in the committee would be reported to this commission. Mm -hmm. As part of the report of the commissioners, so that becomes a regular staple. Oh, you mean to add that to the that, that, that was something we to and the agenda? You mean yeah. everyone or well, whenever it is. I mean, it's not it's not a regular thing. So whenever there is a discussion about a problem, oh. that's what we said. I just said, when do I talk about it? And the answer is, it just becomes a reported commission because you don't make oh. a decision, but it has to be reported to this commission. Oh, to uh, this commission. To this commission. So it comes uh -huh. to report to the commission. Now I understand. But did they want any input from PNZ commission? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Standards or whatever? Different ideas? Any, any input because it's yeah. just, some of it is just, as I mentioned, it is prioritization. Mm -hmm. You can do 12 different things on the site. Which one would we like to see better? That's this commission to come up with. Great. But wouldn't it go low beyond, wouldn't it become an agenda item? No, if we're going to be well, that's what that, no. In, in order to discuss it, you'd have to. But you would bring it, it up. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. thank you, Kevin. Well, let's <laughs> call it. <laughs> it we're, they were trying to avoid having a meeting of every commissioner on this thing. So the idea is to that each one of the each one of the people on this committee would take it to their home commission. Oh, present. yes, you would take it and, and take it right here or whoever it is because I'll like yes. and I report it. And if there's any comments, then I take it back to the committee. right. Okay. Well, so you want to just add that the, the uh, PNC representative will is responsible to uh, we'll report, just report. report or will report on the activity not, not being continue, or continue to report on the activity. Exactly. That's fine. Okay. Is that enough information to have? <laughs> Anybody have any other corrections? Hearing none, then uh, we'll vote on approval of the minutes of January 24th as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. All right. uh, next, we have uh, public communications. Does anyone on the commission have any communications? Staff have any? Anybody in, in the public wish to address the commission? If you're on the call, you can raise your hand. It's quiet. Right. And then we have the uh, Tom Gardner correspondence. Did Andre want to be here? I noticed he stopped in. That's oh no, he he stopped in because apparently poor sound was broadcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 things have fallen apart. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Spying on us. <laughs> that, that's our Chinese weather balloon. <laughs> oh. So, so we have the Baumgartner correspondence. I guess was sent to you, Kev. Well, you wanna... So this is just a bill that that we to track. Um, it it is. But does Andrew want any no, comments it's, from us? No, does it's it... only if. 
you know, you feel like you want to comment on it. I mean, the well, judge is some standards on granting a variance. Um, I thought it was pretty bad. There's there are definitely some problems with it. I mean, given that it refers to you know basing your decision in some cases on community character when but we got rid of community character with a couple of, of years ago because there's no definition for that um, and then it splits variances into um but it seems uh, like it gives an excessive variance. amount of power for waivers and mm. it's very poorly written and it, it's very hard to understand mm. it, 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 and i think we should re it, get it, back it, to it, him with that i okay. assume that's what he was asking yeah absolutely I don't know what other people thought. Um, I, I, I just did a cursory reading of it, and that's what I thought, that it seemed like it was probably above where we wanted to go. Right. Mm -hmm. It just lacked precision. It didn't, it did, just didn't, nothing was very clear on it. There's just no precision, I thought. But I don't know if that's how Bill early looks, and then he'd do a lot more work on it. But I don't know, very unclear. Well, we ought to let, I think we should let him know. Okay. I think that's why he sent it. It is. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, I agreed with the DEP's comments on this. Yeah, they were pretty good. Yep. Okay, I'll forward that on to it. Do we need to make anything more than that? No. So. no. It's, hmm? I think the way I read his email, it was sounded like he was just asking for information, which is good. I was impressed that he threw that, actually. <laughs> Okay, next item is uh, you have one site plan, SIT 22-11 proposed gas station, 588 Long Hill Road. I assume that you yes. yes, it is, yeah. <laughs> Can you... Yeah. It's probably good if you use the uh, thing of yours. Yeah, sure, sure. Can you use the microphone? Yes, absolutely. You can just remove it. You don't have to stand there, but you can remove it over here. But I think it's easier. For the recording. Yep, absolutely. Yep, no problem. Uh, my name is Kyle Hobart. I'm from CLA Engineers. Uh, we're located in Norwich, Connecticut. Um, here tonight on behalf of the applicant, uh, Janet LLC. Um, unfortunately, uh, I'm not sure great. The um, owner of Janet LLC could not be here tonight. Um, we're seeking approval for a convenience store and uh, fueling uh, dispensers. A property located at 588 Long Hill Road, uh, through one. Um, you can see on the aerial plan um, the general location of the property. Um, its frontage is along Route 1 right here um, and is bound by Sunnyside Park, which is a gravel private driveway um, on the eastern edge. Um, it's a 0.95 acre parcel. Um, it's currently undeveloped woodland. Um, it generally slopes from west to east following the slope of Long Hill Road uh, down the hill through that area. Um, it's zoned commercial neighborhood. Um, you can see on that aerial plan some of the surrounding land uses. Um, there's an auto repair shop across the street, several banks, um, office, commercial, um, McDonald's and Burger King are, are just up the hill from the, uh, from the development. Um, the plaza, the commercial plaza located just to the east, um, there's the bank right here, and this is also the plaza that houses the Aldi's um, market in there. Uh, surrounding the site is also some residential buildings um, and also some mixed-use office and residential up the hill along the one. The proposed development um, is for a 4,400 square foot convenience store. Showing you here. Yeah. 
this is a location on the same aerial plan. Um, you'll see the convenience store located in this section of the site. Um, there will be fuel islands located towards the center of the site, and then parking and loading surrounding the fuel islands. Um, I can show you a blow up of the site plan as well. So this sheet is a blow up of the of the site plan that's included in the application set. The convenience store and the fuel dispensing stations are allowed uses in the CN zone. Um, the convenience store located on the western side of the site will be cut into the hill um, in that area. The fuel islands located towards the center are basically um, uh, centered on the site. The eastern portion of the site that includes the um, parking in the around this angle here will be constructed in fill, and there will be a retaining wall constructed to support those parking spaces. That retaining wall um, ranges in height from four to about fourteen feet. That will be a cast cast in place concrete. Um, there are also two other retaining walls on site. This retaining wall adjacent to the building is retaining grade along here. That range is also from about four to 14 feet in height. And then there's a smaller knee wall along the front edge. It's about 18 inches in, in height in that area. The wall adjacent to the building, um, we specified either cast in place concrete or segmental a lock type wall in that area. The smaller 18 inch wall, we specified a segmental versa lock style block, block wall in that area. Access to the site is from two. The entrance is a one way entrance um, on, into the site, a right turn only into the site. The exit is a separate one way um, exit um, located closer to the convenience store. Um, directly to Long Hill Road, uh, Route 1. Loading um, for the site is located towards the rear of the property. Um, you'll see the loading zone specified here, as well as the dumpster enclosures right in this area and there. The dumpster enclosures will be surrounded by a solid PVC fence, so that we screen from view. Uh, we've also included a bicycle rack um, adjacent to the convenience store. And there's also a sidewalk connection to the sidewalk that exists along Long Hill Road. Um, we've also included two electric vehicle charging stations. Um, it'll be located adjacent to the uh, ADA parking space. So it'll be serving ADA space next to it. Site lighting will be through LED lights. Um, there's five light standards proposed um, through the property, and there are recessed canopy lights under the canopy um, over the fuel island. The property will be served by municipal support and municipal water, and the HVAC equipment will be roof mounted um, on the building. Um, it show it in, it'll be. <laughs> in this corner mounted in here and will be screened from view by the building and the roof line of the building. Um, it shows the renderings here. Chip to the other one, yep. <laughs> So this view is looking at the rear of the building. Long Hill Road would be running here. And this is the HVAC equipment that's screened by the building and the roof line of, of the building. For the fuel station, um, best management practices um, and spill prevention measures will be incorporated. Um, they're outlined in the application documents and in the plans um, and will be adhered to. Part of that is that the fueling area 
um, as well as above the uh, fuel tanks um, would be constructed of concrete. It's a non-porous material, um, so fuel won't penetrate into it. Um, the tanks are double wall tanks and the fuel dispensers meet all the federal and state regulations as far as leak detection and breakaway um, fittings. As far as um, spill protection, um, employees are trained in spill protection measures. There's a spill kit retained on site that includes fuel booms and dry, speedy dry, um, to clean up any, um, any potential spills. Signage is also placed around the uh, fuel islands um, with emergency contact numbers and procedures if the spill does occur um, at the site. There are also the owners required um, by DEEP to perform inspections of their equipment as well as their tanks um, and certify that there are no leaks um, through those inspections. Additionally, there are automatic gauges, automatic valves incorporated into the tanks and the filling system um, that prevent overfill and prevent any spills in that case. There are audible alarms um, that are included with all the controls and there's leak detection that is um, with the double wall tanks. And as I said, the fuel dispensers are fixed with breakaway fittings. Um, so if they're ever hit by a car, they break away and there's automatic valves that shut off any fuel to the, the systems. Stormwater on the site. To the next sheet here. The stormwater on the site. Um, roof runoff from both the convenience store building and the canopy over the fuel um, islands will be directed through a hydrodynamic separator and then discharged into an underground storage system. The remains of the site, um, including the parking lot, will all sheet flow towards the east where the currently generally flows now and where the slope of the land flows. It'll be collected in a standard catch basin and culvert system. We've specified hoods on those catch basins to trap and, and retain any floatables in the catch basins. This water then it gets filtered through another hydrodynamic separator prior to entering another underground storage system, a uh, detention system. Both of the underground detention systems combine in this area and then discharge to here, which is a water quality basin. The water quality basin um, is located at the low point of the property. Um, it'll be constructed of a pervious topsoil mix and a native grass uh, plantings in there to filter the stormwater. Prior to discharge, your structure located right here and discharge to the Long Hill Road drainage system. With the use of the hydrodynamic separators to cleanse the parking lot runoff, as well as the roof runoff, as well as the water quality basin, which is sized to store the water quality volume, um, the requirements of the deep stormwater manual and the town's MS4 requirements are met through the stormwater management. Peak rates, peak flow rates to neighboring properties, primarily to Sunnyside Park over here and to this neighboring property over here have been reduced. Um, the stormwater connects to the drainage system in the Long Hill Road, um, which is part of the Long Hill Watershed Area Study that was done. The site and the proposed runoff from the site is reduced for the 25 through 100 year storms. Um, there is a slight increase in the two and 10 year storm. But these numbers are far below what was in the study for the future development of this site. So the flows from the site are reduced from what was included in that study. Um, which is part of the goals of the study is to reduce the runoff and maintain the capacity in that drainage system. Um, both the town engineer and DOT have signed off on the drainage connection to, to their system. In addition, we're proposing landscaping around the development. 
we proposed uh, straight trees along the frontage of Long Hill Road. Um, there are also shade, shade trees um, proposed throughout the development to provide some shade throughout the area. Um, there's also proposed screening evergreen trees um, that will screen along this area of the retaining wall, as well as along this entire frontage of the retaining wall through here. The water quality basin, as I mentioned, will be seeded with a native grass mixture that's suitable, it's a New England erosion control mix that's suitable for these uh, type of basins. That will also be screened by a row of mountain laurel um, along the edge of the property as well. As far as construction, um, a construction sequence has been provided um, on the plans. Um, it includes requirements for pre-construction meeting with town staff, um, as well as when inspections are required by town, town staff, and including flagging clearing limits after the installation of erosion and sedimentation control measures. Um, a site preparation plan is included on there um, that includes the installation of erosion control measures, erosion and sedimentation control measures, um, including installation of at the lower end of the site along Sunnyside Park will be silt fenced back by hay bales. Um, we've also proposed a temporary construction fence along the sidewalk so no pedestrians enter the, uh, into the property. The water quality basin area will be used as a temporary sediment trap during construction. So runoff during construction will be directed towards that. We've proposed the overflow from that temporary sediment trap to be uh, discharge to the drainage system so it doesn't overflow in the Sunnyside Park um, during those uh, during those storms. We've also proposed um, access to the site with an anti-tracking, crust stone anti-tracking pad. There is potential for blasting on site during construction. Um, in the area of the, there is exposed ledge in the area of the proposed building in here. We did some test holes throughout the site in this area, um, encountered some hard pan, but it wasn't ledge, but there is some um, exposed ledge. Um, so there's potential for blasting. We've provided the requirements for um, pre-blast survey, as well as uh, vibration monitoring during the blasting, uh, if, if it occurs. If it does occur, it must go by the fire marshal standards. They have to get a permit to the fire marshal to, to blast. Um, and there are state and federal guidelines for potential blasting on site. Um, and with that, if there's any questions. Staff have a report. Thank you, Kevin. Um, just a couple things. This project was received on um, December 13th. So the 65 days will expire February 16th. The extensions are available for this project and the applicant knows that. Um, as a site plan, this isn't a public hearing. So the staff summary should go over a number of items particular to this project. I think the key covered pretty much everything. There was a question on the fire department, uh, an open comment about the width of the entry um, from 17 to 20 feet. So maybe he could address that. Um, no waivers are sought and he might want to address the signage package. It will have to go for a building permit. I, I can't address both of those. Um, what the fire marshal had requested, we had narrowed this entrance right here to 17 feet to kind of channelize the traffic. What we've proposed is a mountable concrete island here so that the tanker trucks that are making deliveries will be able to mount that and travel the entire width to make their loop around the property. Um, what the fire marshal has requested, instead of 17 feet here, he requested 20 feet of paved um, entrance which I propose we can take three feet of this concrete mountable island and make that a 20 foot, make that a 20 foot entrance. Um, the signage package was, was proposed. Um, there will be building mounted signage um, on the building. There's also a freestanding sign proposed right in this location. There would be typical gas station signage with you know, fuel prices on there. Um, 
have a motion sheet whenever you're ready. All right. Well, why don't you just pass it on? Sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Al. Kevin. And then you can get. Hmm. Oh, you can Kevin. Yeah. I don't know if he can. can you see him? Oh, he has to see. It's a little blurry, so I'm fine. We're going to read it at some point. <laughs> Can you read that, Kevin, or do we have to rotate it 90 degrees? Um, it, it's it, the the line the <laughs> where it's lined up is fine, but it's just it's a little blurry. Nope, I see uh -oh. it now. So I'll open it up then to the uh, commission for any questions. Or start with you, Hal. Oh, sorry, a little technical one. You said the I don't see the lighting details here, but you said the lighting for the canopy is recessed. Is it actually recessed or is it flush? I'm hoping it's recessed just because that's on a hill going up. In which case, even recessed, it, it's, it's going to be glaring down the hill. Correct. It is specified as recessed. Let me grab the okay. That's that would be wonderful. It is a recessed mounting. There's the cut sheet of it. You see in that first column in the red box. Recessed mounting. Okay. Well, I guess it looks like it has a lip on it. Maybe. Okay. It's got a little lip. Um, that's good. Um, I'm a little concerned with the, uh, it's a very shallow retention pond you've got there. It's only four foot deep, but then it's got 18 feet of concrete wall above it. As you, that you will see as you come up the hill. And my only trepidation as to that configuration is one, there's, you've got only um, deciduous trees around it, both original and what you're adding, which means all winter long, it'll be completely in view. Except for the people in the who are running the place, they won't see it. The people will, will not see it. The people across the street wouldn't see it either uh, across Sunnyside. Um, if, if you like, we could add more. We have um, Mountain Laurel proposed along this edge here. We could infill some of that with some Mountain Laurel in there. The I, I think it needs as well. some considerable hefty evergreen screening, Mountain Laurel and otherwise just because all winter long, it will look bare and that's 18 feet of concrete wall. I, I understood and we, we would be happy to work with staff to provide some more landscaping okay. in that area that's that's uh, acceptable to them. Just for record, we do have, you know, up the road, we've got Groton Townhouse with a, a similar condition and we don't want to repeat that effort. Okay. Understood, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, other than that, I think, nice to see something finally go into that, that area. It's a tough lot. So that's all I've got. I, um, I'm impressed that you were able to do what you're able to do. It's thank, thank you. A difficult <laughs> site, it, obviously. It, it, yeah. it was an interesting design. Yeah. The, uh, you had, I thought that you had said four to fourteen feet on the retaining wall. That's correct. But then I just heard eighteen. What is that? Is that it's actually from the bottom of the from the bottom of. The retention pond to the top. Oh, well, okay. All right. Comes out to be can you, where is the, can you just kind of like move your finger along and show me? That where? would be right in this area right here. That's the, okay. Correct. And then how high is it? Uh, like the, the closest to that residential property. Over here. And then around the corner. Th this is four feet high through this area. Um
And at this corner, it is about 10, 10 feet high in this corner. Okay. And do and we don't know if it's going to be poured or blocked. Th this will be poured concrete. This 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 wall will all be poured concrete. Okay, because I thought that I had heard you say Th this wall we've left um the option on this side. Um that that could be poured concrete or segmental versus lock style and that's, wall. That's a sh that's that wall isn't as tall. It is as tall, but it's screened by the building here. We'll block block views of that. And it's retaining the earth, the, the ground slopes up this way. And then so how about from that residential property behind it? From here? Yeah. They wouldn't see this wall because it would be downhill of them. Um, this would be the again this from here, this would be the four foot sectional wall. And that's also the dump is the dumpster shield. The dumpster is here. It, it, it is the dumpster is here and that's surrounded by the PVC fence. The solid four sides, beam. correct. Yeah. Okay. Um the handicap parking looks like it's pretty far from the front door. It's level, it, it is from the front door. Uh it's located right here. And the front door is here, so it is a couple spaces away, but it is level across that um, sidewalk to the front door. I thought that that was supposed to be as close as you could get. It's supposed to be as close as it could be. I didn't catch that. And it's generally advantageous just so there's a clear walkway. Is there a reason walkway? that you put it down the end like that? Part of that, um, it allows a ramp for access to the rear of the building here. Um, it also made sense with the electric vehicle charging station, um, not having that pedestal directly in front of the building. It allows it to be offset to serve both the ADA space and the space next to it. So the so the first one is the handicap. This is the the handicap space here, and then this is a standard space. Can they be the, reversed? Is that a problem to reverse those to put the EV in the corner? And um, the handicap a little closer to the front door. No, I think these could be mirrored and, and space there. That 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 would that would make sense. And we, you know, we could absolutely do that. Yes, yeah. at least that. Yeah. Maybe in front of the front door. Yeah. Good. Well, but are you saying the concern was the pedestal for the yeah, electric no, vehicle charging station? Okay. You wanted access to the ADA space as well as a standard space. So that's usually in front of the door. You like to have that, and the handicap space provides like an egg, exit way into the park. Uh, a, a, a natural outlet. Yeah. yeah. Better. Uh, absolutely. Application there. Too. So there is the, the issue if I can put into that was that the for the, the kiosk for the uh for the charger generally you put it farther away yeah or else people are always going to be there yeah without a lot of car that that that's why we stuck it, it it seemed to make the most sense but I I think we if we mirrored this ADA space over to here and did a standard space here it still serves the purpose of providing EV charging for an ADA space as well. Okay. I'll, I'll just wait to see what other people think. Yeah. I, I prefer it in front of the door, but I take the letter of the law. Um, what is the rule on the signage on the EV? Is that just who uses that? Is it just for the Everyone. So, but I mean, no one's going to, it's like an ex, you have to be charging while you're there. That's what the sign is going to say, right? This is, yeah. yeah, okay. All right. That's what I understood. That's what I thought. And then I just want to make sure that, because I know a lot of the screening, it seems like we're concerned about the street and what it looks like from there, but the, the residential, it's, I just want to make sure that we're not, this, this is a big, yep. you know, it's going to change this neighborhood back there. The, these are all evergreen plantings that surround the entire property here. Um, and then these are all shade trees that are in this area. As the site starts to cut into grade, we, we've done the shade trees in this area. So looking this way, the site will be, you know, recessed, you know, cut into the grade. Okay. These are all the evergreen plantings, as well as these are all the mountain laurels. Or yeah. closing. And there. you're not going to be using the Sunnyside Park Road at all. Correct. That's, that's, that's private property. Correct. That's all. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just a couple of things. Um, when you exit <clears throat> the um, filling station, the convenience store, is it true you can make a left turn onto uh, Long Hill? And is there a light there i can't i was driving past there and looking there but there's a lot of traffic and it's there is not a light directly in, in front of this this area um that you can take a left out of out of the site um dot has taken a look at that and had no issue with that um there is a light um at the aldi's um station down the road as well as at the top of the hill there's another shopping center to the top of the hill 
Right, yeah, I know. I was just surprised they let you do a left out there. They, they were okay with the left out. They didn't want the left in, so we're providing signage for that, right. but they, the left out was okay. Okay. <laughs> um, the other thing on the blasting, um, <clears throat> given the fact there's a nice big uh, red cedar growing on that property, you probably have ledge there since they love to grow on top of those things. But how long could you be blasting there? I mean, what's do we ever have a limit um, that we put on that? Because not that I know it's expensive to blast, so the, the economies of it kind of put some limits on it. Any thoughts on that? Just because uh, there's one thing that drives a lot of uh, neighbors crazy sometimes to start to see it in their basements or whatever, <laughs> product yeah. cracks, whatever. Product. Correct, and, that, and that's why the pre-blast survey would would have to be done prior to you know prior to any blasting. But if you say, "Oh, we're going to blast," what are they? What are the controls or limits on that? I know you have the hours, which is great. But as as far as length of time, or what if what if the neighbors start to complain they're having problems? Um, the the pre blast survey would hopefully solve any potential or, or show you know pre blast and, and after blast them, as well as readings from the, the seismometers that are placed around, along the, mm -hmm. the property. Um, as far as duration of blasting, um, this is a relatively small square footage, um, you know, of, of blasting. Um, we would certainly be agreeable to setting a, a limit of, say, a two-month window um, after, you know, of blasting, you know, during, mm -hmm. during construction to, uh, uh, you know, to allow them to, to set the foundations and what blasting they would need. Okay. I know if staff thinks that a, is an appropriate number to... You have a lot more experience than I do on blasting. <laughs> I mean, generally, you blast until you're done. Yeah, I, that's I, you know, there's yeah. there's really no way around it in order to do the construction. Um, but but you're right. On just recently, even we've had concerns about you know it's been going on for two weeks. When are they going right. to be done? Kind of thing. Um, and and we just try to facilitate the information back to the folks who are complaining. I mean, there's there's. There's just no way around it. I mean, I don't think we can tell them, okay, two weeks, you're done when they haven't finished blasting the site to, you know, to accept whatever um, the development is. Well, if you could say the outside limit, you know, at least it's... Yeah, I mean, if you think two, if you think two months will do yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, we, we could certainly have the contractor provide periodic updates to, yeah, to, okay. to, the, to, to the town so they're aware of the, of the time frame and duration of what they expect as they... Uh, um, perform the work. Be good, be good. Communication be good. You can't exactly say you exactly. gotta. You have to leave now. You've lasted too long. Right. <laughs> uh, typically, on these types of um, developments, we have a pre-construction meeting, yep. and that's something that we will we'll get the blasters' contact information mm -hmm. so that we're able to communicate directly to them and maybe even give the phone number to the neighbors. Right. Ah. So. <laughs> well, sorry. Is it going to happen? The blast survey, or is it? Up to determined by the fire marshal. Uh, it's required. That, that, that's okay. what, that's required by state it, law that, that they do in the pre-blast survey. Yeah. We, we've also included in, in, in the plans that they um, uh, that the blaster provide contact information to the, to the town so that in, in case any people call, anybody calls any issues, that they're required to provide contact information to the town. And, and, and we did have requirements for a pre-construction meeting as well with, with town staff on the, on the plans and documents. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Kevin, do you have any do. questions? Um, first of all, like others, from the <clears throat> top-down view, I think they did a great job, you know, fitting this in. What I'm concerned about is, do you have any architectural drawings from the Sunnyside Park um, <clears throat> on how that 14-foot wall looks? That was a question, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was just flipping too much. Because you did a good job, I think, on a route one, but I'm just concerned about the other three sides, how that looks to neighbors in a residential and then 14 feet on Sunnyside Park. I just love to see how that, that looks within this um, drawing. I saw it. No, I saw it no, before. Oh, yes, I don't know that I printed it out. I think that I... This would be 
what doesn't show up very sure. well is this is the wall here and it returns here. Um, it okay. Diminishes in height as it goes back there. Yeah. That's going back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's the worst case. The worst case is right there. That might have been. Yes. Yes. That, that would be it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And then the north side, if you have that. This would be Sunnyside Park running right, right. through this area here. Yeah. Okay, it looks like four here and here by the by the tree, and then fourteen highest as you're coming up Long Hill Road. I, and then, <laughs> I couldn't hear you. <laughs> okay, sorry. So um, at the lowest point, it's four feet um, as you go down into the residential neighborhood, ten feet at the tree, right? And then 14 feet, as you'll see, is coming up Long Hill Road. Correct, right in this area. And right. you'll see kind of, you can kind of vaguely see the, the evergreens that are planting through here. And these would be the mountain laurels coming, you know, through this area and then the deciduous trees. Just a little bit bigger. <laughs> and, and, and we'll add additional plantings through there. We'll coordinate with staff on adding additional uh, plantings through there. Sure. Um, I presume in back of the, um, convenience store is the north side. Um, what does that look like um, if you're the neighbor on that side looking toward that store? From the north side, that, that would be the Grand Utilities pump station. Oh, it is. That's not a residential site. That, that, that is a pump station for Grand Utilities over there. <laughs> yeah, I've been looking at Google Maps trying to figure that out. It's a very good yep. drawing. Thank you. No other questions. Thank you. Could you, you show how the the uh, trucks come in to fuel the station? Sure, I can. Can through there. You can't show it on the. So this would be the, the tanker truck mm -hmm. fueling movements coming through here and doing a loop, backing up the fuel over the, the pad and then leaving the site. Um, and this would be if they were coming from the opposite direction, same thing, they back up and then exit the site. And this is why we proposed the mountable curb in here because the bigger trucks can drive right over the top of that. I would think on that you could do what Stonington did on the in downtown Mystic is they just put cobblestones in that honorable area so it's sure. all flat. Yep. But visually it looks like it's it it, it it provides the visual separation so that cars are channeled in the up yeah. to, to the narrower spot. Um but it is mountable so the trucks but you know, how do you have a truck go in the can enter the you aren't supposed to make a left turn, so how do you from Route One, so you know you're right. I, I I hadn't thought about that when I did that. So yes, this would essentially be a moot a moot point. They would be coming. They're all coming from this way. There. Yes, but there's they're, enough room. I mean, they sit over the correct. They pad. yep. They can either if it's a regular truck doing you know. And there's enough. You no, know, serving the convenience store. There's room on the loading space, or they can line up over the over the pad for fueling. Yeah. You have a station for adding air to your tires in here. Is that required? Um, I don't believe it's required. And at one time it was shown one. At one time it was, wasn't it? I in Connecticut. I thought they had a, didn't they? I think it's got to be free. Mm -hmm. I know if you just provide one, it has to be free, but I don't know there's a required. Oh, it isn't anymore because <laughs> that was a long time ago that they. Hmm? Yeah. What? At the express on Route 12, it's it's always with Gomi to have to I, pay for here. I, I know many of them are change operated, but I don't think they're supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have any other questions. Does anybody have anything else? Just one, one quick one is that sure. it has to do with it actually doesn't have to do with the layout, but it has to go to the impact of, of 
knocking out the ledge is what are you doing with the rock? Are you going to be pro are you going to be crushing it on site? I guess is what I'm asking. Uh, what else? <laughs> well, but, but I mean, do you take out boulders, or is there a rock crusher there because you're going to use it? And that's that's what I want to know. We we have not provoked, provide, uh, proposed um, crushing on site at this okay. time. All right. Anyone have any questions one. on the motion? Oh, I'll uh, go ahead. Oh, just the, I, I don't know if anyone else uh, wants to weigh in on the handicap spot, but I, I would like to see it rather in front of the door. Isn't it required? So I think by the building code, it's got to be closer to the door, but the, they also have to have um, access to the charging station. So to oh, the EV. Oh. Oh. oh, but the ADA doesn't care about charging stations, though. Uh, but the bill, our building official interprets it that way. That if it's got a, if if someone right. who is not in a handicapped vehicle oh. um, can access it, someone who is in a vehicle. That's actually a good idea. However, that doesn't take away the ADA requirement right, exactly. for yeah, having it in the closest possible space. Well, that would determine the closest space, I guess. Right. So that becomes a problem because then you end up with the kiosk there, but right. maybe that's too bad to provide the ADA it should be right in front. And, but it doesn't it doesn't seem well, that it makes any difference. I mean, you, you're not losing any parking spaces no, by doing that, no. right? I think it was an aesthetic. They just didn't want the want the uh, charging station to be right in front of the door, but maybe it has to be. Correct. And and, and that that's another we'll certainly be willing to work work with staff in the bill and the building department to shift that. ADA space yeah. as close as possible to the front door. Yeah, I, I think that, and as has been said before, the even though it's not required to have a cross-hatched area, but that's the norm, that belongs right in front of the door. So yeah, correct, and in, and in this case, the owner was okay with having not having that directly in, in, in the, at the front door. Um, but again, like so, we 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 would certainly work with staff to, to relocate that as close as possible. Okay. Anything else? And I'll make a motion to approve uh, site plan 22-11 for a proposed gas station and convenience store, 588 Long Hill Road, for the following modifications. One, results of the pre-blast survey shall be submitted to the planning office to be put on file. Two, the southern curb cut shall be widened from 17 feet to 20 feet to accommodate fire truck turning radii. Three, the town of Groton shall affect the retaining wall and stormwater basin prior to construction of remaining site improvements. Four, the design engineer shall certify the stormwater system has been constructed for the approved plan prior to the issuance of a certificate of site plan compliance. Five, a lighting must, must be configured, or the lighting must be configured with a photo cell sensor or time lock on time clock off operation and be turned off after business hours. Six, any modifications to the site plan based on any federal, state, or local agency requirements shall require additional review and approval by the town of Groton land use agencies as appropriate. Seven technical items raised by staff shall be addressed. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? What are the business hours? They intend to be over 24 hours. Oh. Any other discussion? Hearing none, then we'll vote on the uh, motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion is carried unanimously. Good luck with your guest. Thank you for your time. Wow. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. okay. I just uh, let it bother the least of what people there. No, mm -hmm. that... no. Then actually, we're never going to turn it off. Well, that's part of it. It won't be turned off by time ever, but it will be turned off by close. Yeah, all of them will be for the timing. All right, Kelly. Moving on then to old business. We have zoning regulation amendment preliminary discussion for cannabis. 
And I guess we have the town attorneys. Yes. Um, yes, we had uh, indicated that we had significant comments or some comments you wanted to look at them before um, we submit an application. So I can go through these with you if you like. Yes, some, some of them I didn't understand. What, no, I mean, what is being done? Right. Whether it's just not the wrong, it's just. A, I know, I know. No, it's hard to see the way the track changes, the, right. does their uh, cross outs and changes. Yeah, why don't you? I'll just run through them. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the first is with the definition for adult use cannabis use. Um, he noted that while adult use is a term that's in the statute, it's not defined anywhere. And he suggested this, eliminating this. This is the definition. No, 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 just the words adult use. That's what this is defining. Right, right. His suggestion was to eliminate it just because um, the state is going to deal with, uh, with age limits. Well, but, right. But back on page 92. Down at the bottom, you have section 5.1-15 titled adult use yeah. cannabis uses. He yeah. didn't pick that up. That's fine. I mean, we'll just leave it. As long as they're consistent, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> well, there's something else in the zoning regs that does say adult daycare. But that's true. No, no. Also, so it's not as if. No, no. I understood what the attorney is saying from a legal standpoint. If you don't use it, that term somewhere but if you want to use it somewhere then you got to define it and right. that's why this is a definition right okay hmm? yep. this is the definition yep. of adult use yep. yeah yeah okay. and he wants to eliminate just the word the words they'll use as well oh, then you don't need the definition true that's true <laughs> that's true but just as long as we're consistent okay. so it doesn't get you into trouble that's all I don't think his comment was legit. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if and, I don't have a so, problem. Right. It was it was a recommendation from him. It wasn't a, you know, you need to do this in order to be legal. That's that's fine. Um, so the rest of these definitions um, <clears throat> on this first page, um, you'll note that he's crossed out the, the word as defined in Connecticut General Statute 228 mm -hmm. 420. It's, it's not. So he wanted to remove just the reference um, to the statute there. Yeah. Okay. We turn the page. Um, we get to medical marijuana dispensary facility. In this case, he was very he was comfortable leaving that reference in because that is in the statute. So. Well, and, wait, I had a problem on that where it says such dis. Transfer facility shall be considered a retail use for purposes of these regulations. What are these regulations? It's this comes out of this is the verbatim text out of the statute. It is. So do we? I don't know. Actually, See, the reference is going to be confusing between these is a the statute or these the oh, zoning okay. regulations. Okay. We'll, we'll specify. Okay. Well, and I'll, 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 or just make sure it makes yes. sense. I don't care. Yep. Huh? Yep. Take out the word these. I don't know. Yep. Or maybe you don't even need these regulations. I don't know. Well, because I think we need enough information here so people understand it. Oh, it has to be. So you don't have to go to state statute. That was the problem I had. It was, it was like, but. Oh, you mean to delete the hall? section no i think uh, that's fine to leave it in there i think and clarify that yeah. bit at the bottom yeah yeah, yeah. zoning regulations okay we had no comments on any of the, the zones where mm -hmm. you've allowed or and or prohibited <clears throat> which brings us to the use standards so one thing we had talked about was distance between establishments and horsley Witten had developed um, from language that that said you can't they can't be these establishments can't be located any closer than 1500 and 1500 feet from each other um, uh, 
the town attorney indicates this is not something that's um, that's authorized by the statute and recommends that that be eliminated. But, yeah, but can we do that? I mean, can we put this in as our own I think regulation? We, you know, we have major, I had major issues with this whole thing. Uh -huh. And to not have at least some you know, distances between these things, I, I wouldn't have even supported it, quite honestly. Um, and some towns don't even have any facilities at all. So I mean, that's like saying you've really got a big distance between facilities. And, and there are mm -hmm. other towns that have used this type of language. Oh, so it's allowed. Cannabis. His take on it is it's not it's not authorized by the statute. Uh, yeah, and but is it authorized because we can put it in our own zoning regulation? I, I'll confirm. See, that. that's the uh, difference. Yeah, I know, I know. I mean, he was he was looking at this very closely with the statute because it was really specific as to what commissions could regulate. Um, I'll, I'll I'll confirm that. I mean, we were doing we were suggesting the same thing with the data centers as well, right? Yes. He hasn't seen those yet. <laughs> <laughs> but and I had a question about that, and I won't. I'm not talking about those, but that we don't do that with any other businesses. I don't think where we say that no, we don't. You can't have a, a toy store uh, 1,500 feet of another toy yeah, store. Right. But I thought you could do with package stores. But I think the statute specifically allow mm. that. Mm. What's that? Oh, that you allow a permission to do that. Oh, I see. That language is not but, reflected in okay. this. So, what? Well, I didn't realize that's where <laughs> that's where the authority comes for, from. For liquor stores. Hmm? For liquor stores, yeah. It's like the, the state has such higher levels allowable um, of it, certain drugs than I would ever support. And then <clears throat> we can't have any regulation I, on I would think <laughs> distances. It, that's kind of. I would think if it's a it's a allowable for liquor stores, you could do it for this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was didn't the state sort of try to infer the other way around that if you mm -hmm. didn't have rules, would, it would automatically go to the liquor that's store. True. That's true. That's true. So maybe that's how you get around this. Mm -hmm. There's some way that. we want to tighten up the liquor store yeah. rules so that it it's conforms to what we're saying now about cannabis. Yeah. No, the liquor stores have that, right? They have rules on. Not I don't know. No, I they don't. That was, that was the problem. They don't. No, okay. That's why how we ended up with the liquor store in front of the school. Oh yeah, we don't have that in our regulations. Oh, no, no, in our regulations, right. but we can. But you could. That's what I meant. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. We could have a regulation that says it can't be near a school. That's what this is. But this is 15 from another. Oh, well, from another just, cannabis. From another cannabis. Oh, no, We're just picking cannabis. the right. thing that it can't it's, be near. It's, right? it's, and we say school. Right. It's a use compared to churches similar and use. other that, cannabis. Clause. This is just separation between. Cannabis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, if if you but, said that it can't be near schools, uh, churches, and cannabis stores. But again, that, the, yeah, the legislation said. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, church and right. schools. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, bases, I think. What, are, what do we want to say on that? We're going, you're going to the back and talk. I will. I will. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll discuss it with him. Um, I'm just making notes about it. Yeah, there's a difference between being permitted to, though, as opposed to being prohibited from mm. doing it. Yeah. It's two different questions. Yep. And this is prohibiting it. This is prohibiting us having a rule. Is he suggesting mm -hmm. that we're prohibited from having that rule because it isn't permitted specifically? Yeah. So those are two different questions. Mm -hmm. They are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, distance from a protected use. Um, he wanted to add um, parochial in terms of describing schools because the, the Connecticut mm -hmm. general statute says parochial. But that they're wrong. The statute is wrong yeah. because they're 
No, because you have schools that are not sponsored by a religious. This is an addition. Is this an addition or he wants it, to replace? He wants, yeah, the district oh. wanted to eliminate private and just have it. Be no, that's no, what no, I right. no, no, don't exactly. want to eliminate. No, private. That's right. And, and I don't have that discussion. I mean, our oh. definition of a school is private or public. So we wanted to capture that. It can so be public, said, private, or parochial. Yeah, that's exactly. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's where I, one of the things I couldn't understand yeah. what, what was intended here. That's fine. Yeah. Um, okay, within that same section, um, he suggests adding required distance to the sentence that would read, this required distance shall not apply when there's a permanent barrier, just to clarify. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, still then, in that same section. Um, he found um, the wording uh, regarding bodies of water um, separating he found that to be really confusing. Yeah, we, to a lot of interpretation. Things. We had a lot of discussion about it. And that's what I yeah. kind of, uh, suggested that. Take it out. I think that's okay. Because okay. it, yeah. it says it's just some examples of something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think hopefully there weren't very many places no, that we found exactly that right. that's even the case, right? And the Paquanic River only comes up on one side of the street. That was. And, and these um, establishments are not allowed in that zone. So it didn't really even matter. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. And he has security plan. Security plan. Um, he wanted um, a bit more definition to what the security plan is. Um, yeah. So I found language in other folks' uh, regulations to prevent and detect diversion, theft, or loss of cannabis. So this okay. describes what the security plan has to address. So, so how is it? How will it end up? How will it sound? <laughs> the underlying section is added in. in yes. In the term required is lined out and you add in submitted. Submitted with the, with the application. Okay. All right. See. Permanent issuance. No zoning permit shall be issued to any applicant granted a permit of federal permit under the section until a certified copy of a corresponding cannabis hybrid retailer or cannabis retailer is issued by the state of Connecticut to the applicant is filed with the application for the zoning permit. Kind of confusing, but I yeah. um, but this is this is what he suggested. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, yeah, okay. Um, let's see. Next section uh, retail sale of cannabis not directly to consumers. Again, it's similar language that he suggested in the previous section um, for the description of the security plan. And then to specify the zoning permit shall not, right? The zoning permit shall be issued to any applicant granted a permit or special permit under this section. Until a certified copy of the corresponding um, stuff of the state is submitted. When we see this, that goes to the public. Can we make it obvious what we're doing? Or sometimes some of these places that say should be inserted, we should get rid. It's not should be. Where? Where, where are you putting? No, I. Say if you go to the the second page here, this table of permitted uses. Oh, so, oh, no, it, no, that's right. It's not going to, it won't look like that. It should, this is proposed. No, no, I yeah. don't have a problem with what's proposed. It's the, it the terms, it's not should be, it, it's say will be exactly. or is inserted. Exactly, that's right. That, though it's throughout this, there's... Okay. Well, that's this was based on Horsley Witten's memo. Oh, no, I, yeah. no, I, know I just want to make sure will that work. it's very clear that there's no shoulds. Mm -hmm. that it, that's it. <laughs> and if mm -hmm. I can work it out, 
No, I don't. No, no, no. It, it's we'll actually put the table in there, and it's oh. just the X's and P's and whatever. So, oh, all right. So it's not going to be this wordy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that'll make it. it yeah. Make it clear. Yeah. Well, I just want to make sure that it's very clear yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. Hmm? And it means that this is, it's an exact change. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I don't know. Does anybody have any concerns with what's proposed to it? Okay, I'll I figure think out. That's pretty good. I'll figure out. Um, I'll talk to Rich about uh, the separation distances, um, and then I'm hoping to have an application. I'd, I'd like to have a hearing, um, either the last meeting in March or the first in April. There's a requirement, a 35-day requirement for notice to a number of different parties. And if we can get this figured out next week, we can do a March hearing. Um, if not, it'll be in April. Well, can we, yeah, can we see it, what you want us to see? I mean, so, just so we can proofread it, but so, uh, say at our next meeting. So do you, you want to do that one more time? Okay. No, so, no, just as so though this is what we're going to present okay, to so the public. Push it to an April hearing. Okay. What just one more meeting? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, it's, but I just want to I want to make sure we can get okay. out in time. Yep. Hmm? Yep. Does the state limit the number of licenses per town? Um they did, but I think that, that yeah, that's they, what I thought. They removed that. Yeah. And that so now it's just the wild west. Well, it's no, because whatever, they aren't gonna sign the permits. Yeah, it's it's whatever requirements they the state has. Yeah. I, yeah. No, I'm and I don't mean to say the Wild West, but I mean it's just I, I guess uh, to address Sue's concerns. Are it, would it be if we if he comes back and says 1,500 feet isn't a way that you can manage this? Are there other ways that we can manage it? Well, the state, or are there other the ways that it will be managed? I think the state will manage. They've been pretty slow, haven't they? And <laughs> Being should... slow at managing two different I mean, Well, <laughs> and the thing is, is that all, you know, uh, uh, when the money starts rolling in, they're going to. I know, exactly. I think they're going to like these things. Oh, I think. Oh, if you look at other it, states, I mean, the market is kind of crashing on this because there were so Oh, really? Yeah. So they shouldn't have a problem with distances. I don't think they're, yeah. They're, yeah. Anyway. Oh, we'll see what he comes up with. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the way that we could possibly control it at a level would be to use our zoning districts and then say, right no, you can have them in this and then put a zoning district in between. Could we have an overlay? No, you don't want it. No, you don't want an overlay. You don't I'm, want just, it. Yeah, I'm just thinking out loud here. I'm just like wondering how we. Yeah, no, okay, all right, that's fine. But maybe that's a, maybe that's something. That if he comes back and says that, then we need to maybe just. Yeah. Then we're not uh, ready to go. This will be late for. Our, uh... Yeah, I don't want to lose Sue. <laughs> sure. Well, well, here's something to keep out for. All right. Okay. okay. That's it. New applications? Do we have any? No. no new applications. And no referrals. Correct. Right. Okay, commission reports report there. Hmm? Uh, reported chair. We signed the Mylars today for. The multi-family development on Drosdick Drive. Ooh, that's another one. And have a sore wrist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of pages. Wow. <laughs> huh? Yes. Uh, at our last meeting, somebody in the public raised the issue about the state changing the noise regulations. Yep. Could we get a report on? I was planning to have that for your sometime your workshop but yep oh okay that's fine yep. well it's not i don't know if it's really a workshop issue or just well maybe we have to be on there so yeah, that's fine yep. hmm? and i see uh my favorite uh landlocked boat storage area is full of boats again okay. at the intersection of uh new london road and and Fort Hill Road. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. I don't think you could squeeze any more boats in, and they're all shrink wrapped to it. So, you know, he's not working on them. They're just storage. 
and the other remaining square feet are with occupied with cars. So I don't know if he's storing those or not. <laughs> That's his method of keeping the grass down so he doesn't have to mow it. <laughs> he doesn't have to shovel snow. Huh? Or shovel snow. <laughs> Yeah, that's all I had. <laughs> Does anyone on the commission have any? I uh, hmm? I watched the. I'm supposed to report to you. Oh. Okay. I watched the February second and the February ninth uh, workshops. Were the well? clear. Yeah, I actually have some questions I wanted to ask about one of them, and then the FOIA. I watched that one as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Sent out. So, put me down for three. <laughs> okay, I watched that one too. Um, so one of the things that they, and I asked, I chatted and asked a question and they answered it, but I'm still not clear. It was about sidewalks and the presenter made it sound that if I walk on a, if I do a sidewalk by myself and other people also do the sidewalk by themselves, that that constitutes a meeting and that it's supposed to be noticed. No, no, that's no. why no. no. I'm going to watch them all again. Yeah. No, if you do it on your own, I mean, you should certainly report it out at the the next meeting. You know that you walked the site. Yeah. Um, but no, if if it is a meeting on site with you know three or more of you guys, then yeah, you have to post it. It's a it's a meeting. Yeah. Not so I he made it, I think that it was because they were talking about like a lot of different groups. You know, besides just our okay. group, right? So wetlands or whoever, and they made it sound. And that's what he made it sound like. Huh. But then he didn't. Uh, I mean, I, it doesn't seem like like if I just drive by it something, right? Sense. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. I didn't think it really. I, it sounded it like a site walk like we did. Oh, it is. At um, the Mr. Goral School, yeah, right? It is. But mm, and a was that? Did we? Was that, that was post? That was in there for and, minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah when we've had. Yeah, so I don't. What? I'll watch it again, and I'll. Make sure that I wasn't misunderstanding what that's what it sure did sound like it. And I was a little, I was like, and I asked about it and then he responded to it, but I wanted to pepper him more. But I also didn't want to like get myself in trouble. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, certainly it was definitely uh, in, informative and uh, probably good to watch. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting that when he talk, they talk about meetings, they only talk about meetings with public hearings and not regular meetings, at least the first one. And I, I was a little disappointed when they have these so-called polls on them, that they really weren't very clear on how you determine the answers, because they are complex issues. Yeah. He tried to say, is it a conflict for somebody sitting on the board that has a marina within 400 foot of another yeah. marina that has an application? And I don't think you can just say that with that information because a lot of marinas, if they're close to each other, don't compete with each other. They have a different set of clientele. Yeah, it seems and, it, and it depends what the other marina was doing. And, and they just wanted a black and white. Too used to multiple choice questions for exams because they're lazy and don't want to review, a, you know, a thought out answer. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, some of the some of the examples that I used just for that were hard to under hard to understand and without more information. You needed more information to answer that. Yeah, and then what was a conflict of you know. Like, yes, uh, what conflict of interest, you know, and, like and it always comes down to when you live in a small town, it's, yep. you know, everything is. But the right. one that was uh, the second one on the meeting, holding a meeting, I thought was a lot better. Oh, how to chair a meeting? Yeah. Well, how to conduct a meeting. Yeah. I just had one, one question. So on Tuesday, the 21st at Union Baptist, the mystic parking is going to be discussed by John Burke, right? Um, and, right? And what happens after that? Do we move to implement it, to execute on that plan at that point? I, I think it then goes back to the council okay, um, for, for some kind of decision and, and funding. So it's just public input. That's all the meeting is at it the is. Union Baptist. Okay. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. 
Does anyone have anything else? Oh, the only other thing that I wanted to just ask about is the zoning official. He, he's still going to continue to give us reports when he makes decisions. Oh, yeah, we have. Oh, okay, all right. I didn't know. I just assumed that oh, that was yeah. the case, but I, we haven't seen one since no. Strasdick Drive thing there, uh, the little subdivision or whatever right. it was. But right. uh, okay, that's it. I just want to make sure that those things. I'll just say one thing. <clears throat> if I was driving Route One. I thought the uh, Chelsea Groton Bank building really looks nice. And it's really classy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's I was, I was it's beautiful. I thought it would be nice, but I was really surprised. Mm. Yeah, it's How nice really, it really updating. Yeah. It looks terrific, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. No, I'm just saying, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. It just looks terrific. Mm. It does. Maybe it'll we'll improve the whole thing. Like Greenwich or something. Wow. <laughs> Maybe it'll be the catalyst for all of them. Just kidding. The sidewalks are great. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. They're oh, they? wide. Mm -hmm. They're tall. Wow. Really? That's what the zone requires there. Oh, yeah. yeah. It should be yep. wonderful. Yeah. Plus, well, yeah. Oh, it should make, it could, it could trigger something off. I hope so. I hope it's contagious, but I'm yep. sure. You never know. Well, well I'm, look at I'm what's happened. excited when they open it back up again. <laughs> but I, I think when you've seen what's happened on the Quantic Bridge, it's uh, yeah. oh, the yeah. next couple it's of years, a, it's been couple. amazing. We finally got some stuff done down there. More yeah. to come. I was told the bridge, that new apartment building we permitted, mm -hmm. um, has four occupied apartments. Great. Oh, okay. That's a great location. And they're nice. We, we really, really nice. Are they? Really nice. Yeah. Which one? I've heard that's the one that's down. The oh, 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 I haven't even. There is. Yeah, I just access to Dairy Queen. There you go. And uh, it's so convenient. It's going to be great. Spot. All spot. right. Mostly the spot. <laughs> report. Okay. Report of staff. Yes, I've got two things. Um, the CIP is ready for review. Um, <laughs> Earth, we all think. Oh. I know. Um, so, special meeting? Why not? Um, probably some time in March. <laughs> we'll send you yeah. a poll. Um, Are you going to bribe us with pizza? <laughs> oh, I was going to ask do you, want to, do you want to do it in person or do you want to do it virtually? Because I'm going to oh. tell the department heads if they want to attend virtually, they can because. They are. That's we all right. have tons of meetings. Sorry. I don't have a problem. I think it's better if we meet. Okay. Okay. Meet okay. okay. here. <laughs> and but I don't think I don't see why the presenter can't do okay. it. Okay. Right. Great. Yeah. So we'll we'll send out a poll. Yeah. We're more just kind of filling up. Yep. Um. And then I I just wanted to let you know I in the next couple of weeks I expect an administrative site plan application for. The bank that's at the big Y plaza. There's going to be a new bank going. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Well, but they're going to reconfigure the parking lot. So you may see like, whoa, a lot of activity. Why didn't we see this? Okay. It it meets the it meets everything for an ASP. You know, there's no addition to the building, there's no additional employees, there's no additional residential units. So I just wanted to let you guys know if you see a whole lot of activity out there. Oh, are they reconfiguring the, the driveways though? No, it's the parking inside. That's all because they you know how they had those drive up ATMs? Yeah. Yeah, they're taking that out because they're oh. not, yeah. Oh, so good. they're gonna configure the parking to make it more okay for them. Because so. it's such a nightmare maze back there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's still gonna be a bank. It's gonna be a bank. Yeah. It's a bank, it's gonna be a bank. It's just changing the name. Yep, that's right. So just wanted to let you guys know that. That place has had quite a few change, name changes. I think it's people's world. I don't know. It seems to change. <laughs> Anything else then? Nope. And we have our ASP report and update on applications that are on the agenda. Anybody have any concerns with those? So the next meeting we'll have two public hearings on these two subdivisions. <laughs> two lot subdivisions. Yep, two lot subdivisions. Why don't they do free splits? They already did. Oh, <laughs> that's usually what you tell me when I ask that question. <laughs> they used them up already. <laughs> okay. And what is that? That that just goes for the life of the 
So Why if your are... property is in the same configuration as it was prior to November 19th, 1956, you're entitled to a free split. If it's not, if you, you know, you chase the deeds back in the deed um, descriptions, property descriptions, if it's not, then somebody already used up the first free split. Okay. Yeah. I'll ask you a question afterwards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not part of this. That's fine. Okay. So you have a workshop on the 23rd, right? That's correct. Okay. And our next regular meeting is the 28th. That's correct. And then we'll lot of see about March. That's right. Wow. No. <laughs> no one has anything else. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. So move. Second. It's moved and seconded. Right. Great. Great. Thank you. Actually, we did better than I thought we did. Hmm? Thank you. I feel